Hi, this is Cindy, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the first steps you'll need to take to work on a page in your Canvas course. The first thing you'll need to do is sign in to our Canvas instance, and you can get there by going to the Employees page of the district website and clicking on Canvas, or going directly to emsisd.instructure.com. Once you sign in, the things that you'll see on this Canvas dashboard, if you will, are things that are related to the courses where you're the teacher as well as the courses where you're enrolled as a student. So recent activity, to-do lists coming up, recent feedback. This is just a place where I can look and see what's going on, what's coming up. It's kind of a nice feature so that I can see everything in one place. One of the things I do like to point out is in the upper right hand corner you should see your name. Any of the tools next to your name up here in this corner are all things that are related to your account. Now let's go ahead and get into one of our courses so we can start editing. To access your courses you're going to hover over the word courses at the top. Some of you will see one or two courses, some of you will see a lot of them. If you want to see all of your courses, you can click the View All or Customize link that's part of this drop down menu. As soon as you do, you're going to see all of the courses that you're associated with, some of which you're the teacher, some of which you're the student. If you would rather not have this kind of long list of courses, because you're really only going to focus on one or two right now, you can come into this view and click the star in front of one or two or however many of these courses. When I refresh the page, and I'm doing that by clicking the logo, but you could also hit F5 on your keyboard. Now when I hover over courses, I only have the courses that I starred. It's kind of like my favorite courses here. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the sample teacher course. You can go ahead and go into whatever course you'd like to start editing. So the very first time I sign into a course, you're going to notice a few things. There's no recent activity because you haven't been here yet. In the upper right hand corner, you're going to notice that the course is currently unpublished. That's fine while you're working on it, but you do have to remember if you want your students to see it, you, you will need to come back to this spot and hit publish. You'll also notice that there is a setup checklist. This setup checklist is helpful if you're going to create a course where your kids are going to be working and you got you want to add files and content and all sorts of stuff. If you're just interested in getting your first page set up for now, don't worry about that setup checklist at this time. And I want you to pay special attention to the options on the left hand side of this course. Typically, when I see something online that's grayed out, I tend to think it's not available to me. In Canvas, though, that just simply means that there's no content in that tool. All of these tools are available to you in each of your courses, but if it's grayed out, we just haven't added anything yet. Now one of the things that's nice about Canvas is that many, many of these tools are similar. Announcements, assignments, quizzes, pages, discussions. They have a similar layout to how you create them. They have similar tools, but then each one has their own set of options that make them unique to that particular tool. We're going to start by working on a page. So go ahead and click Pages on the left. Even though it's grayed out, we're going to click Pages. And anytime we go into one of these tools, announcements, assignments, quizzes, pages, we want to look for the add button. So in this case, we're looking for the add page button. And in almost all of these tools, there, it's going to be a blue add button. So that makes it simple. So let's click add a page. We do need to give the page a title. So I'm going to call this welcome to my course. Hopefully you can think of something just a little bit more exciting. The page title will be visible on your course and you can always come back and, and change this. So on this very first page it makes the most sense to me that this is where I'm going to introduce myself or I could talk a little bit about this course. It's probably also a good place to add a class schedule. One of the things I do want to stress is that if you already have the about me information or your schedule in another format, do not recreate it. You can go and copy and paste it. So I'm going to pull up this OneNote page where I've got a little blurb about myself. I'm just going to highlight and copy that. I'm going to go back into Canvas. And like most 
web authoring tools, you have a series of tools across the top and you have the space where you put in your content. So I'm just simply going to paste. I used Control plus V to paste that. If I wanted to add an image to this, my natural thought would be to click this little button, but that's to embed an image that's already uploaded someplace. So I've got my cursor right here in front of my text. To add an image or a link or a file, I'm always gonna move over here to the right-hand side of my screen. So in this case, I want to add an image, so I click Images. It's looking to see if I have any images associated with this course, but since I've just started, I don't. So I go ahead and click Upload a New Image. Now I select Choose File to go and find the picture. So I'm going to maneuver to my Pictures folder, and I'm going to grab this picture and click Open. Now it doesn't start uploading immediately. It gives me the opportunity to hit Choose File and go back and get another image if I would like to, but this time I'm only going to upload this one image. So I click the Upload button. So what it does is it uploads it. It's now in this course, so I can use it on another page, and you'll see that it popped in really big on my page. So I'm going to click on it once, and I can resize that down to a little bit better size. And you'll notice that it doesn't really wrap text the way I think I want it to. So the trick to that is to double click and then use my alignment tools up here. So one of the things that I, I like to point out when we're looking at pictures is this particular picture, I kind of look like I'm facing off this other direction. So I am going to highlight this picture and actually right align it so that it kind of looks like I'm facing the text. It's just a little trick. So I think I like that one better. Now, if I wanted to add my schedule further down on the page, I could bump down a little bit, put a little header there, and I might want to make that header a little bit bigger. Let's say 12, maybe I'll bump it up to 14 and make it bold. I'll move down and I have my schedule here in my OneNote. So again, I'm not recreating anything. I'm going and I'm copying it and I've pasted it in. So that kind of gives me an idea. I may bump that down a little bit more. Now you're probably going to want to put a little more information including your contact information, your email address, your your school phone number, I probably wouldn't put the extension unless you want people to be able to direct dial you during the day. If you have a professional social media page, you might want to add the link for that as well. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip that for now and go ahead and show you the next few steps. If you look down at the bottom, you have the option to save or save and publish. Save is most helpful if you're not quite finished with the information and you want to come back and do it later, so you want to be sure that you save. Save and publish means I'm ready for this to be visible. Now you have to remember that our course is not published yet, so it's not really visible for our students, but as soon as I do publish the course, this one will be okay. You'll notice now it comes to a slightly different view. I'm still in the Pages section, and this time I have a View All Pages button. It does note that it's published. You notice when I hover over that, I can unpublish it if I need to. If I need to get back in and add more content or edit it, I can select Edit to go right back to that same view where we were. And then I have the Settings tool where I can delete the page, I can look at the page history, or I can share it to Commons. And that would be more if you were doing a content page that was over a unit that you were doing, you wanted to share it up to this Commons area where other teachers could then pull it down into their courses. So I'm going to go ahead and select View All Pages. And this is going to take you right back. This is exactly where you would come also if you just clicked the word pages. And it's going to bring you to a list of all of your pages. We only have one. This is how I would add another. But this is the last step we need to do to make sure this page that we just created is our home page. I need to come from this view and click the little settings tool here and select use as front page. Now, if you would like to use something else, like an assignment or an announcement as your front page, that's fine too. But if you want to have this page as your front page of your course, you need to make sure you make that designation. Now, what we're going to do is go back to Home. And this is the home of our course. This is what we'll see. 
One of the things I like to point out is you have all of these different tools available. If there's something you don't want to have available in your course, say like the chat feature, from your course, you click on settings. This is not the settings for you, this is the settings for this course. Then you select navigation from the top and you see all of the different tools. You can reorder them if you want something to go to the top, but if there's something you want to turn off like chat, you select this little drop down and select disable. You can do the same thing for SCORM. SCORM files are files that you pull in from other online courses and you put them into your course so we're probably not going to be doing that at any point soon. So you can pick and choose what you want to have disabled and hit save. Two more things before we're done with this. The first thing we need to do is choose a home page. In this case, we're going to select Choose Home Page, and we have all of these options. Since we just set up the page, and here's the name of mine, hopefully yours is better, um, that we want to be our home page, we're going to select that page and hit Save. Now, if you get in here and it says you need to set a default, then you have to go back into Pages, and remember, click the little down arrow next to the Settings and set it as that page. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. So we now have a home page. And then the last thing we need to do is click Publish for this course. So now if we want to see how the student will view this, I go back into Settings. I select Student View. And this is what the students will see as soon as they sign in for the very first time.